Today, Libya's president paid an emotional visit to the scene of the attack. His government is convinced this was a pre-planned assault and is conducting an investigation. So is the FBI. A team of agents arrived in Benghazi today to sift through the ashes and look for clues. Before arriving here, the FBI spent hours interviewing witnesses and victims who had been evacuated to Germany. They're also receiving cooperation from the Libyan government, which says it has several suspects in its custody who possibly have important information about the attack. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I am, uh, I, I am trying to reconcile how Benghazi was not safe enough for the Federal Bureau of Investigation to go, but it was safe enough to leave a below-spec facility for our diplomats to stay in. I'm, I'm just trying to reconcile those two points. It's too dangerous for the Bureau, who are trained law enforcement officials, but it's just fine for diplomats. Uh, at, at some point, I'll reconcile that. U.S. officials say this was not an out-of-control demonstration, but a well-executed attack by a well-armed band of extremists. Officials suspect the attackers were either linked to or sympathized with al-Qaeda and that they took advantage of a demonstration against that anti-Muslim film to launch their assault on the anniversary of 9-11. American Ambassador Chris Stevens and Information Manager Sean Smith were in the main building when the attack, which turned into a four-hour gun battle, began. Smith was killed. Smoke and flames drove others from the building. Stevens went missing, and his body wasn't found until the battle was over after he was somehow transported to a Libyan hospital. U.S. officials still don't know whether he was shot to death or suffocated in the smoke. Two other Americans were killed in another building. Stevens had his own bodyguards, and the consulate itself was protected by American and Libyan security forces. But there were no U.S. Marines who often serve as guards at diplomatic outposts at the consulate, which is located in a residential neighborhood and was a temporary facility not built to withstand terrorist attacks. After the attack, an elite anti-terrorist unit of about 40 Marines was flown in to beef up security at the American Embassy in the capital of Tripoli. Air Force transport planes flew the bodies of the dead Americans out, along with at least three who were injured and the rest of the approximately 25 diplomats assigned to the consulate. At the same time, the State Department urged all non-essential personnel to leave on commercial flights. The FBI has opened an investigation is, and is sending agents to sift through the wreckage for evidence. And at the same time, the U.S. is increasing its surveillance over Libya, including the use of those unmanned drones. In addition, Scott, the Navy is positioning two destroyers armed with cruise missiles off the coast of Libya. Bottom line. This is a terrorist hunt. David, thank you. The attackers made sure there was nothing left. Every single room in every single building on this compound looks like this, torched and ransacked. No place was safe, and there was nowhere to hide. A young neighbor, Zahi Braham Najem, showed us around the ruins. He used to visit the consulate often before it was destroyed. They burn everything, they steal everything, and they broke the dishes here. The people in the neighborhood that we spoke to said it wasn't clear who was behind the attack. A Libyan security guard who tried to defend the compound but was wounded in the attack couldn't tell us either. But he did say it had the marks of a planned assault. We can't show you his face for his own safety. It was a setup, he said. They were armed with automatic weapons. Some had their faces covered and wore flak jackets. He told us there was an explosion when the attack began, and then the shooting started. He was wounded by shrapnel in his left leg, then he was shot in the other leg. He told us the guards were no match for the attackers. The American flag used to fly on that flagpole behind me. Now, that's about all that's left of America's presence in Benghazi. Charlie, we're told the consulate was a temporary facility, really just a house in a neighborhood. Uh, how was it defended? Well, Scott, it's not what you would call a heavily fortified compound. It was barely a fortified compound. There are metal gates on, on three sides of it, and there is barbed wire on top of cement walls. And one thing, we didn't really notice any evidence of a forced entry at those gates or anywhere else on the compound, which 
made us a little bit curious. Also, we never saw anybody in the way of investigators, whether they were Libyan uh, or American. And uh, we were really able to come and go as we please, and there was nobody there protecting, essentially, a crime scene. Charlie, thanks very much. A radical Islamic group called Ansar al-Sharia is, according to U.S. officials, the leading suspect in the attack. The name means supporters of Islamic law, and U.S. officials describe it as an offshoot of al-Qaeda. At least one of the attackers was photographed at the scene, and Libyan officials claim to have already made arrests. Attorney General Eric Holder cut short an overseas trip to return to Washington, and a law enforcement source said the FBI would begin the investigation by interviewing the 30 American survivors of the attack who are now at a U.S. military base in Germany. The attackers struck at 10 p.m. local time Tuesday and within 15 minutes were inside the compound firing on the main building, where Ambassador Chris Stevens, Information Manager Sean Smith, and a security officer had already begun destroying classified documents. Smoke and flames from a rocket-propelled grenade which exploded on the roof drove the security officer out of the building, but he went back in to find Stevens and Smith. State Department spokeswoman Victoria Newland described what happened next. But when he got to Sean Smith, he was already dead. He pulled him from the building. He went back into the building uh, with additional security forces, but was unable to locate Ambassador Stevens before the fire overcame the building. The battle then shifted to an annex where two other Americans, former Navy SEAL Glenn Doherty, and a still unidentified State Department security guard were killed, apparently outnumbered and outgunned by their attackers. The bodies of the four Americans are scheduled to come home tomorrow, a chilling reminder that while Osama bin Laden may be dead, his sympathizers are alive and dangerous. David, you reported in your story that there were 30 Americans at the consulate who got out. How did they get out of there? All the Americans took shelter in the annex to the consulate and were hunkered down there until after about four and a half hours, Libyan forces finally got control of the situation. Then the Americans were taken to the Benghazi airport, flown to Tripoli, and from there to Germany. Thanks, Dave. Today, the president of Libya's National Congress, Mohamed Al-Magariaf, visited the crime scene to have a look around. You're confident that the men behind this, the people behind this, will be caught? Definitely. Why? What makes you Sooner so confident? Sooner or later. Because everyone is determined to... It's still unclear who is behind the attack, but a radical Islamic group, Ansar al-Sharia, is considered a top suspect. The group is well known and based in Benghazi, emerging after the fall of former dictator Muammar Gaddafi. But Libya's deputy interior minister, Wanis al Sharif, said he's looking at a number of different groups. I met members of Ansar al Sharia that night, he told us. They came to me in person and denied all involvement. That same night, and do you believe them? He told us he'd need stronger evidence before placing blame. People had automatic weapons, RPGs, they were wearing flak jackets. This is an organized militant group. This isn't something that you can identify? You don't know who is responsible? There are weapons in every house, he told us, even RPGs. Having weapons doesn't mean you're part of a militia. He told us the consulate has finally been closed off to protect the scene. Later that day, Scott, we were approached by a senior Libyan security officer who was on duty that night. He handed us a piece of paper with what he said was the name of a chief suspect in the attack. He said that Ansar al-Sharia was responsible. He said 17 of his men were injured in a firefight that night. And he said they simply weren't prepared for such a sophisticated attack. And when he says sophisticated attack, Charlie, what are we talking about? Well, he described that the attackers came and closed off the roads in many vehicles. They were also armed with uh, machine guns and rocket-propelled grenades, and they all struck at once, and they were able to get inside the embassy and launch their attacks with other demonstrators who had also gotten into the consulate. Thanks, Charlie. The attack on the U.S. consulate in Benghazi was just the beginning of a terrifying night for the Americans inside. Libyan officials told us their forces helped evacuate 32 Americans out of the consulate as the attackers torched 
and storm the compound. A Libyan commander told us a convoy of 22 vehicles, two of them armored, raced from the U.S. consulate down this road to a safe house a mile and a half away. But the safe house they fled to, which was supposed to be in a secret location, had become a target. So this is where they were attacking from. Just as a U.S. extraction team of commandos arrived to take the Americans to the airport, the house came under heavy fire. It was intense, deadly, and accurate. Everywhere you look on this rooftop, there's evidence of what must have been a ferocious fight. There's damage from automatic weapons, rocket-propelled grenades, and even mortars. The precise mortar strikes on the house suggest those who launched them knew exactly where to aim. Clearly, Americans fighting back from this rooftop were hit. Our escort, Libyan Commander Abdul Salam, gathered two blood-stained American flak jackets and a helmet to hand over to U.S. investigators for evidence. Libyan officials say it's clear from the second assault on the safe house that those behind the attack were determined that no Americans made it out alive. We asked the Deputy Interior Minister how the attackers apparently knew the location of the safe house, and he said, quite frankly, there are spies everywhere. And I said, even within his own security forces, and he admitted that was a possibility. But he added, a convoy of 22 vehicles moving through Benghazi that night at high speed would not have gone unnoticed. The Libyan president also told Bob Schieffer today that his government has arrested roughly 50 people for the Benghazi attack and that at least some of them are from other countries. Our Charlie Daggett is in Benghazi tonight. Charlie, what more are you hearing about who's responsible? Well, a top Libyan official told us today, Jeff, that uh, members within the militant group Ansar al-Sharia are still the main suspects in this attack, including some individuals who are still at large. Uh, but he was quick to point out that while some factions of that group may be responsible for the murders of Ambassador Christopher Stevens and three of his team, not all members took part in the attacks. Charlie, I think a lot of people might wonder, what, what kind of support does Ansar al-Sharia uh, receive in Libya? Well, Jeff, like many brigades here, they are responsible for the day-to-day -day running uh, of Benghazi, particularly when it comes to uh, providing security here. As a matter of fact, uh, even today we saw their trucks with their insignia on the side parked outside the uh, area hospitals providing security there. But as their name states, uh, they are supporters of Sharia law, strict Islamic law, which of course goes against some of the principles of democracy. That has made them unpopular here. At a protest, an anti-American protest a couple of days ago, uh, people were driving by and taunting them and shouting pro-American slogans. And a couple of months ago at a demonstration that they held, um, people were playing uh, rap music and pelting them with stones. Charlie Daggett in Benghazi. Charlie, thank you.